So I work on Android, which is the operating system that's running in on the phones of many in your pockets. Um, so I spend a lot of time thinking about smartphones. And mostly I think about how can I make these devices better at connecting us to the people we care about. But Chris, you say, that's what they do. So why are you thinking about this? <laughs> so to, get, uh, to understand the answer, I think we need to get some perspective on the situation. And to do that, I want to pull you back in time a little bit. When I got my first cell phone, um, fun, um, and people would call me, and they would say, often they would say, where are you? And it's not because they really needed to know where I was. It's not that I was late and they wanted to know why I was late. Because this was the 90s, nobody really did that yet. Um, <laughs> so I would sort of tease them. I'd say, you called me on my cell phone. You don't get to know that. And, <laughs> and it would sort of throw them for a loop. They, they didn't know how to start the conversation without knowing where I was. So why is that? So to now we have, we say, you know, what's your number? But back then, we had home numbers and work numbers. And if they had called me at home, I would have had to have been home to get the call. So they would have already known where I was. And they would have had that picture of me in my house. So this is sort of an accident of the technology, right? That, the, that it connects you to a place I might be and not me. But it was something that affected us unconsciously. It affected the conversations. So if you imagine that, like, there's some noise in the environment, like the air conditioning system or something. And sometimes it stops, and it's like, what was that? It's almost oppressive when it leaves. And I think it was like that. I think people could be forgiven for being uncomfortable, because this, this big force that was shaping our conversations was now gone. So it's better now, right? You call Chris at my pocket, uh, and you talk to me, right? Um, unfortunately, in the intervening time, the world has gotten more complicated. So you might call me on my telephone, or you might call Chris at Hangouts, or you might call Chris at Skype, or you might send a message to me via SMS, or you might mention me on Twitter. Or there's all these ways to get in touch with people now. So we've moved from a reality where the, the device was sort of affecting our conversation and changing our conversation to a, a place where it's the applications that are changing our conversations and affecting our conversations. But it's still the technology is dominating and shaping these conversations in ways we're not even aware of. So that's why uh, my colleagues and I still work on this. And um, so let's think about what that means. If you want to send me a message, it used to be that you had to think about, where was Chris so I can talk to him? Now you have to think about, well, does Chris have the right kind of computer or the right kind of phone or the right kind of game console? Does he have the app I want to use? Does he check the app I want to use? Can I send it to him? And once you finally send me a message, I have to get my phone out and turn it on and unlock it and get to the app and look around in the app and find your message, right? So there's still technology is, is still primary in this conversation. And I would like to be in a world where the people and the conversation are primary to the conversation. I want you to be thinking about the people that you care about and what they're saying, what they're sending to you, and not how you're getting the message. So, so there's some things that we've been doing to try to fix this. So let's uh, think about for a second how I get the message. So it used to be, a long time ago, if I wanted to know if, that I had email, I had to go fire up the email app and check it, see whether I had email. Um, not so long ago, there was this, cell phones now have these things called notifications, which are little messages to you that say things like, you have a message. And it's really like it's a, little, it's a little bit of status from the app saying, hey, I've got something for you. You should come check it. So about three years ago, one, one of the things we did is we made those spaces bigger. It sounds like a small change. We just made them bigger so they could have more information. You could put pictures in them instead of just text. And most importantly, we gave you the ability to, to respond to messages or to react to those messages right from the notification. So, you could see the picture of the, the cat, and you could like it right from the notification. You never saw the app at all. Um, and so that's that first step toward, even though it's a small change, it, it brings the conversation more to be centered on the person and you and the people you care about. So that's great, um, except it's even more complicated than that, right? So we have all these new applications, all these new technologies to get in touch with each other. And the problem is we've all, we haven't, 
together come up with an idea of how to use them. So we've all found ways to, f found ways to fit them into our own lives. So I know people who hardly ever check email. If I want to get in touch with them, I have to send them a message. And I know other people who don't want to get an instant message unless you know, it's important, unless it's really dire. So uh, how am I supposed to keep all that complexity in my own head? I can't, right? So I do the best I can, and I send the messages where I think they belong, and it's up to the recipient to deal with the mess. And who's the recipient? But you know, all of us, right? I'm dealing with the mess, you're dealing with the mess. So the next thing we did, uh, which again, sounds like a small change, we gave the applications the ability to, to tell the phone this message, this notification, is about that particular person. That sounds a little pedantic. But if you think about it, you get a, a message that says, Chris sent you a message about TEDx. And you know who Chris is from context, right? But your phone, your smartphone, despite being smart for a phone, isn't that smart. And it can't figure out which Chris it's talking about. It doesn't know that it's this Chris or that Chris or some other Chris. There's lots of Chris's. So now it has this little bit of little hint that says, no, 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 that particular Chris. And you can come back at some other time and say, that's a Chris I care about. This is somebody I care about. I care about this Chris. Now, why is that so powerful? So if you're like many people, and this is the device that everybody uses to get in touch with you, then you have a terrible problem. And that's, what do you do with this thing in the middle of the night, right? What do you do? Um, if you turn it off, then you risk missing the message from somebody you care about, and probably an important message. If you leave it on, you will never sleep again, because, <laughs> because it's gonna be buzzing and beeping and trying to get your attention, every app, right? And, um, but now, now my phone knows who's important to me, and it knows who the messages are from. And I can tell my phone, listen, I only wanna hear from the people I care about for the next eight hours, as if I had slept eight hours a night. And then I can, sleep so I can sleep soundly, right? Because I know, I can sleep knowing that I'm not gonna miss that call that is important, but I'm also not gonna hear from the politician asking for money or the game that wants to sell me 200 coins or whatever it is. <laughs> so, um, so I think this, is a, this is a, makes the device much more human, right? If, I, if my mother were to call me in the middle of the night, it would be important and I wouldn't wanna miss that call. And that's obvious to me, and it's obvious to you, now it's obvious to my phone, right? That's, that's what it's really about. So that's why my colleagues and I work on this and try to figure out how to connect you with the people you care about using these devices. Because we shouldn't be wrapping ourselves around the limitations of these technologies. The technology should be wrapping around us and helping us do what's important to us. Um, and so, you know, this is your life, it's your story, and the story shouldn't be about your phone, it should be about the people you care about, and it should be about you.